Praise the Lord. So, as I always say, who's travelled? <laughs> Anybody travelled today? Richards Bay? Travelled from? Richards Bay? Johannesburg? Scottborough? Scott Where's that? Johannesburg. Wow. Oh, you're very welcome. Very welcome. Hallelujah. It's really great to see you here today. And it's really great to see the excitement and joy that you've come in because that will bring on the miracle, just like that lady with the issue of blood. So I'm going to get through a quick message today so we can get on to praying for the sick and seeing these wonderful deliverances take place. And I can assure you, you will not be the same when you walk out here today. You're going to see a change. Do you believe that in your heart? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I've titled it today, God's Word is the Final Authority. How many of you believe that? That's it. So if the doctor says you've got cancer, what do you say? I don't receive that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. That may be the truth in the natural, but the blood of Jesus, what he did upon the cross, we need to appropriate it. We're going to do that today. Hallelujah. Let's start off with Hebrews 4, verses 12. And friends, no matter what you're going through, you know, just, just understand how powerful the Word of God is. And it's got me through so many things, so many sicknesses that I've had to encounter in my life, so many, um, you know, financial situations or whatever, you know, where I just began declaring it and declaring it, no matter what people had spoken or said, you know. What we're doing at the moment is we're looking at properties by faith. Isn't it wonderful? So last week we looked at a property near Camperdown here, you know, just, just a little bit in, in the land. And, you know, as we looked at it, we just knew that perhaps with man it's impossible. And we have to believe that, friends. We have to believe it. We have to see it with the eyes of faith. Because until you begin to see it with the eyes of faith, you won't receive it. Because we're walking by faith and not by sight. Not by what is happening around, not by what your bank balance may be, not by what that sickness or that pain that you're suffering from. You know that Jesus did it for you. And, you know, even if it takes a month or two, it doesn't matter. You must be grounded in the Word of God. Okay. And this is how we maintain healing and deliverance as well. It's not enough to just come up and be prayed for. You know, God wants us to now develop that relationship with Him, to get into the Word like never before. You know, He heals us so that we can come to Him, not so that we can just receive the healing and then go back to that way of life, where some have even come back and said, I was healed and then I lost it. Okay, so that is possible. Even Jesus had said this, you know, to the man that, that He healed at the Pool of Bethesda. Later on in the marketplace, He said to him, I see you are well. Stop sinning so that something worse will come upon you. Hallelujah. So we need to understand, friends, that if there are any idols in your life today, it must go. All right. Otherwise, you're going to be walking around the same mountain year after year, wondering, I've been there, I've been to this place, I've been to that place, but why isn't God healing me, friends? Those idols need to go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that idol, too is, you know, it could be something that you hold, you know, even above God, you know. That idol could even be the TV, because you spend more time in the TV than with God. God is a jealous God, friends. Okay, so we're not to worship these things. In the last days, hallelujah, we are, are just focusing upon Jesus Christ. So there's the word. For the word of God is a life, and it's active, sharper than any double-edged sword, and it penetrates even to the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So as you read the Bible, 
It reads you as well. Okay. Praise the Lord. So the Word of God is above everything um, this world says or has to offer. Your response to people should be what the Word of God says. Okay. All right. So God says that all things are going to be possible for the one that believes. All right. Okay. So, you know, you could have received a bad report from the doctor and... Uh, that's not what God's word says. So when you receive a bad report from the doctor, one must look inwardly, you know, and, you know, just, just get into the word and say, Lord, do I have any ought? Because your word says if there's any ought, I must rather go and sort that out before I come up to the altar. If there's any unforgiveness, if there's any bitterness, any pain of the past, we have to get rid of these things, friends, uh, because this is how we come to the Lord. Okay, all right. So that, that's important because God's word never returns void. He says, by his stripes you are healed. So we have to believe that in our hearts. But we need to also apply the word of God to make it happen. So this it's not just for me to pray over you, but you have your part to play in receiving as well. It's very important to understand that, friends. Um, you know, God wants our hearts. That's what he wants. It's all he wants. Uh, praise the Lord. And also, he's not a man that he should lie you know, if he says, by his stripes, you are healed, we really have to believe that. And if we aren't, understand that it's not God and it's not anyone else or even the person who prayed for you. We need to look deeply within our hearts. Okay, so God's word needs to become rooted in our hearts and you can really stake your life upon the word. If his word says it, you have to believe it. Um, so a bad report is uh, not God's will for you. His will is his word. If you want to know what his will is for you, just look to his word. By his stripes you were healed. There is nothing <clears throat> more that the Lord has to do for your healing. He's already done it. And so, you know, as I... I uh, teach you really now, preach to you, that you understand that it never does return void and that we have to learn to confess it as Christians. So often we have people who want to come back, and, and, but their confessions are negative, completely negative. And then I know why they didn't receive it because even though it's taking a week or two, they decided to go by sight or by feeling and not by faith in God's word. There's a test of faith, friends. And God is looking to your heart because he's always faithful to his word. His word will never return void. Um, but we need to learn to believe it in our hearts. And obedience is required. It really is. And I've seen God open blind eyes on many occasions. I've seen him open deaf ears. I've seen him heal people just instantly. I've seen demons of schizophrenia be cast out of pastors and you'll be amazed you know what what is out there and cancer spirits even manifest and speak out um, minds become restored and renewed because of me no because i chose to act upon the word and believe it in my heart hallelujah praise the lord because I expected actually to see a change. When I prayed, I believed. No matter how long the miracle was taking to come to pass, I know that it's settled. I know the person will get their miracle. Hallelujah. And sometimes it's hard to get to the root, to speak the root cause out to the person because they become offended. They don't want to hear about that unforgiveness or that bitterness that's actually blocking the way for them. But friends, God's word is sharper than a double-edged sword. He says, if you do not forgive your neighbor, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you, no matter who prays for you, no matter how anointed a pastor may be. 
The fact is that if you have bitterness, you're going to block it because it's out of the will of God. Okay, praise the Lord. So, <clears throat> hallelujah. Here's the next scripture, 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 to 4. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. Do you see that? <clears throat> We're not fighting in the natural. Our fight is against powers and principalities, as it says in Ephesians 6, verses 12. Just take that down for your times of meditation, friends. It says here, on the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Hallelujah. So, you know, these demonic beings are things that come against our progress, and we need to act upon the word and basically just cast it out. And uh, that's why we must confess the word. We must apply the word in our lives and we must repent and most importantly, sanctify our lives. We must sanctify our lives through the word. Praise the Lord. So we need to keep that Bible open, friends. We can't keep it shut, you know, because faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. And it only comes by hearing the Word of God. Faith does not come through anything else but the Word of God. So when many say to me they have faith, and then I ask them how often they read the Bible, and they say, well, I never pick it up, you know. What kind of faith are you talking about? Okay, faith in man? <laughs> No, not faith in God, because if you had faith in God, you would confess it. You would believe it, okay? It would become a reality to you. And so the devil's tactic is for you to keep that Bible shut and uh, to distract you, to put distractions upon you, um, to try and nullify the Word of God in your life or at least he's going to try. He wants you to confess, I did not receive. That's what he wants. And then you know the devil's got them because that's what they believe in their hearts and there's nothing you can do about it for as a man thinks within his heart, so is he. We are justified by our words. We are condemned by our words. It's up to us in the end how we believe. Praise the Lord. So God is looking to our hearts in everything that we do. Okay. And we have to have a free spirit to contact the Lord. So even your attitude, friends, in coming here today means a lot. The Lord is looking to your heart. Uh, do you believe that he's the deliverer? Do you believe that he is the provider? What are you saying in your heart? Because that will be the outcome that you will receive today. I wonder if I'll receive today. He who is like a, who doubts is like a wave tossed. The Bible says in James, he must expect not to receive anything of the Lord. So I'm just speaking the word of God out there, friends, so that you would become more rooted and grounded in his word, that what is final with God becomes final with you. Hallelujah. We have to have a foundation. Without a foundation, we'll fall. Think about a house. If it doesn't have a foundation, uh, how will it stand? You know, if you build your house on the sand, it's going to fall. You need to build your house upon the rock, and that rock is Jesus Christ. Okay, so this is how we maintain by keeping in the Word. And I can tell you, friends, from personal experience, you don't want to get away from the Word. You don't want to have that break away and that break away from prayer um, because the devil just looks for a, a a moment to get in, okay, and to try and distract you. Don't let him begin to speak the word of God because today we live in a day and age where, you know, if people say, oh, a terrible day today or, or oh, these cues are too long and this, that, and the next thing and many other words come out, I'm the kind of person that will not agree with you, okay? Um, I would rather just keep quiet 
or just say praise the Lord. And uh, it's amazing some of the responses I get. I will not conform to this world. As Christians, we are not to be conformed to this world, but we are to be renewed uh, by the image of Christ and by how Christ walked, friends. And it's important that because when you do begin to walk the way that Christ walked, you'll see visions, you'll have dreams, you know, you begin to prophesy, you begin to see things in a different way because you're in the Word and you don't want to let the Word of God go. You just become so rooted and grounded in Him because you know it never returns void. He's not a man that he should lie. So friends, today we confess our faults to one another and we pray, as the word says, so that we may be healed. So, you know, we to preach the full counsel of the Lord, not just by laying hands upon the sick. You know, if we, to, the Bible says that if we confess our faults and pray for one another, we will be healed. So confession brings that possession in our lives. Hallelujah. So God is always faithful to his word, uh, but we are not always faithful. And I know that with all of us, everyone, we are all on a journey with the Lord. And uh, we need to just get rid of offenses. So if there's anyone in your heart today that you need to forgive, please, friends, make the deliverance process a lot easier for yourself. Um, you know, the anointing, some people say, well, this person manifested, I didn't, you just went past me or whatever, I can only do what I see the Father doing, okay, so as I pray, some will manifest, some won't, it doesn't matter, but what really matters to God is your heart, okay, your heart in receiving, that's what really moves God's hand, is your heart, praise the Lord, because his word never returns void, and it's not a lack of anointing either, you know, you see it for the next person, then you wonder, why not me, well, why are you looking for the manifestation, what are you looking for, look to Christ, look to God, okay, um, some people are so caught up in that, uh, so many emails, I didn't manifest, so what? <laughs> Does the Bible say, um, thou shalt manifest and be healed? Or does it say, thou shalt lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover? It even says recover. There could even be a recovery time. Okay. We see many instant healings take place. And I know that you're going to get instantly healed today. But my prayer really is that you would maintain it. Okay. Praise the Lord. So friends, and whatever you believe in God for, just believe it to come to pass. I'd like to end off on Mark 11, verses 23 to 24. And this is one of my most favorite scriptures, friends. And they're all my favorites, but this is a little like up from my favorite. And, uh, you know, it's almost, it's been said that it's a blank check to the church, you know. Um, I don't know about that, but it, I really believe it to be so true in my life. And uh, it says, truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, what do you think that mountain is? Sickness, disease, that problem at work, problem with a mother-in-law, brothers, sisters, aunties, <laughs> the friend. <laughs> All right. If anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart. Do you see the condition? You know, say, oh, no, Val, we just have to believe. Yes, you have to believe. But it says now, it's giving you some instructions here. It says, if you do not doubt in your heart, but believe that what you say will happen, it will be done for them. Do you see that? The word never returns void, friends. I'm going to pray for you. You're going to be healed today, okay? But it's up to you whether you maintain it, okay? Whether you doubt in your heart. But, you know, it says, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. God doesn't lie. He said it. There's your check. <laughs> All right. So in whatever area you really believe in God for today, you know, God gives us a great key to receiving, uh, be it finances, be it healing. Uh, what are you suffering from today? I know that many of you are sick and even in pain as well. 
and even in bondage to bad dreams, and even, you know, bad dreams, well, you know, in many ways. But um, no matter what you believe in God for today, just begin to please apply his word. You know, you can't keep that Bible closed. It's not going to help you in the long run. And a true Christian is really one who stands upon the word, who believes it no matter what. And God has given us everything. He's not going to get back upon the cross. Jesus did it all for us. He's paid it all. It's really up to us to really get our receivers, you know, get expectant about receiving from the Lord, knowing that it's going to happen. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I just want to encourage you, friends you know, um, with all of your heart, that no matter what things look like in the natural, to just really believe that God can do what he said he would do. Uh, What Jesus did upon the cross, the completed works, uh, qualifies you for your healing. (laughs) Okay. There's no qualification to receive. Jesus has already done it for us. Now we must act upon the word and believe it and confess it with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. And that's what it is to confess Jesus is Lord, to act upon his word. Okay. It's not good enough to say, well, Jesus is Lord, and then you're speaking your lack, your sickness, and all of that. Because then Jesus is not Lord in your life because you haven't believed it and you haven't acted upon it. Okay. So, friends... Let's be like those who take that narrow path that, you know, as we go to the Lord, um, let him say to you one day, well done, my good and faithful servant. Um, No matter what you went through, you believed the word, you acted upon it, and uh, what a glorious day. Friends, we have eternity in our hearts. We have the word in our hearts. So much more that the Lord wants for us to walk in, each and every one of us, praise the Lord. And he did say that he came for an abundant life. No matter that even the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, Jesus came for an abundant life. He did promise it, friends, and that doesn't return void. It really is true if we believe it in our hearts. Praise the Lord.